Why is there a renewed interest in the moon? The magic word is water. Just as liquid water turned Earth into a living gem, the tantalizing prospect of ice water nearby has made the moon so very special. This means that humans can live for longer duration on the moon without worrying about food and water. In the long history of humanity, we have seen that once basic needs are ensured, human ingenuity can make the impossible possible. However, the water moon was detected way back in 2008 by India's Chandrayaan-1, which had a NASA instrument on board called the Moon Mineralogy Mapper. M3 detected water molecules in the soil of several polar craters. So why, 15 years down, we are witnessing the race for something that was known a decade ago in 2008? The answer is that the world has woken up to China. What was known to India all through since 1962, the West has woken up to now in 2023. The 1962 Sino-Indian conflict was primarily an attempt by Mao Zedong to distract its masses from the worst famine in the history of humanity, which lasted from 1959 to 1961. And an estimated 15 to 55 million Chinese starved to death because Mao Zedong wanted to rapidly industrialize China. This madness of technological superiority and its urge to be the sole superpower is not lost on communist China under Xi Jinping in 2023. In fact, if reports are to be believed, China has taken the lead over the US in quantum physics. That is quantum computing, quantum communication, quantum sensing, quantum cryptography, quantum imaging, and on and on and on. Just to give you an idea of how powerful the quantum technology is, quantum computers can solve problems that would take modern computers billions or trillions of years to solve in a matter of minutes or hours. So how does the moon come into the picture? The moon provides perfect geographical settings for quantum technology to be better tested. The moon has a very low background noise level. This is important for quantum experiments, which are sensitive to interference from external factors. The moon's vacuum environment and lack of atmosphere makes it an ideal place to conduct quantum experiments with minimal interference. The moon has a very stable temperature environment. This is also important for quantum experiments, which are sensitive to temperature fluctuations. The moon's surface temperature ranges from minus 298 degrees Celsius at night to 127 degrees Celsius during the day, but the temperature variation within a given location is very small. This makes the moon an ideal place to conduct quantum experiments that require a stable temperature environment. The moon has a very low gravity environment. This could be beneficial for certain types of quantum experiments, such as experiments that involve the manipulation of atomic particles. The moon's low gravity could make it easier to create and control quantum states of matter. So will the success of Chandrayaan-3 help India compete with China in space technology and regain the lead it held until very recently? Will the newfound land and resources quench the thirst of China and the former colonial powers of Europe? Now let's discuss this. Dear viewers, I'm Lipakshi Kurana from Study IQIAS and you are about to embark on a journey of learning like no other. So sit back, grab a pen and paper and get ready to be inspired. What does the success of Chandrayaan-3 mean purely in technological terms? What are the technological challenges for ISRO to be the best in the world? So there are three parts to it. First, the launch vehicle. The launch vehicle used in Chandrayaan-3 was the Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle Mark III or GSLV MK3. It is a three-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle developed by the ISRO. The GSLV MK3 is capable of placing a four-ton payload into geosynchronous transfer orbit. In terms of comparison to other launch vehicles in the world, the GSLV MK3 is a medium-lift launch vehicle. Well, it is comparable to the Ariane 5, which is used by the European Space Agency, and the Falcon 9, which is used by SpaceX. 
The GSLV MK3 is a relatively new launch vehicle, having only made its first flight in 2014. However, it has already proven to be a reliable and capable launch vehicle. It has successfully launched several spacecraft into orbit, including the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter and lander. However, there are several limitations with GSLV MK3. It is a medium lift launch vehicle, meaning that it has a limited weight capacity. It can only place a 4-ton payload into geosynchronous transfer orbit. It is a liquid-fueled launch vehicle, which means that it is more complex and expensive to operate than solid-fueled launch vehicles. It uses a cryogenic upper stage, which is more difficult to develop and operate than other types of upper stages. Just to give you an idea of where we stand in comparison to some other launch vehicles in the world, the heaviest launch vehicle that the US currently operates is the Space Launch System or the SLS, which can place up to 130 tons into low Earth orbit, that is LEO. The heaviest launch vehicle that Russia currently operates is the Angara A5M, which can place up to 25 tons into low Earth orbit, that is LEO. The heaviest launch vehicle that China currently operates is the Long March 5, which can place up to 25 tons into low Earth orbit. So what is preventing ISRO from developing a super heavy lift launch vehicle? Well, more than technological challenges, it is the lack of government funding and geopolitical sabotage, as seen in the case of Sri Nambi Narayanan or the delay in Chandrayaan project that have hindered ISRO's progress. Second in line is the Moon Rover. The Pragyan Rover is a six-wheeled robotic vehicle. It is equipped with a variety of sensors and equipment to conduct a number of experiments, including alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. This instrument will identify the chemical elements present in the lunar soil and rocks. Laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy. This instrument will identify the chemical composition of the lunar surface by firing a laser at it and analyzing the resulting plasma. Next is magnetometer. This instrument will measure the moon's magnetic field. Next camera. This instrument will take images of the lunar surface. PanCam. This instrument will take panoramic images of the lunar surface. Mini Raman spectrometer. This instrument will identify the chemical composition of the lunar surface by shining a laser on it and analyzing the resulting Raman scattering. Well, next is X-ray fluorescence spectrometer. This instrument will identify the chemical composition of the lunar surface by firing X-rays at it and analyzing the resulting fluorescence. The Pragyan rover is expected to operate for up to 14 days on the moon's surface. It will travel up to 500 meters from the lander and will conduct its experiments at a variety of locations on the lunar surface. Indeed, the Pragyan rover is a significant technological achievement for India. Interestingly, China also has a rover on the moon. The U-22 rover of China is the first rover to explore the far side of the moon and it is equipped with a variety of sophisticated instruments that will enable it to conduct important scientific experiments. Overall, Pragyan and U-22 are both impressive robotic vehicles that are capable of conducting important scientific experiments on the moon. They have different strengths and weaknesses and they're designed to explore different parts of the moon. Thirdly, what kind of potential facilities could we see on the moon in the future? There are many potential facilities that we could see on the moon in the future, like a lunar base. That would be a permanent human settlement on the moon. Next, a lunar telescope. A lunar telescope would be located on the far side of the moon where it would be shielded from Earth light and atmosphere. This would allow it to make observations that are not possible from the Earth. A lunar mining facility. A lunar mining facility would extract resources from the moon such as water ice, helium-3 and other minerals. These resources could be used to support human activity on the moon or they could be exported to the Earth. A lunar manufacturing facility. A lunar manufacturing facility would produce goods and materials on the moon. This would reduce the need to transport supplies from the Earth and it would make it easier to establish a self-sustaining human presence on the moon. 
Next is a lunar tourist destination. Well, the moon could become a tourist destination with people traveling to the moon to experience its unique environment and to conduct scientific research. So how exciting is that? However, the technical facilities hosting quantum physics experiments on the moon will be the strategic differentiator. Let's take a look at it. Development of quantum computers. Quantum computers could be used to solve problems that are intractable for classical computers such as breaking encryption codes and simulating complex molecules. Next is quantum sensors. They're more sensitive than classical sensors and they can be used to measure things that are impossible to measure with classical sensors such as gravitational waves and dark matter. Next up is quantum communication. Quantum communication is more secure than classical communication and it can be used to transmit information over long distances without being intercepted. Interestingly, China has already tested it on planet Earth. The United States, China and India are all investing in quantum research and they are all interested in conducting quantum physics experiments on the moon. So can the moon's resources help mitigate an environmental catastrophe on Earth? Moon does offer certain scientific, technological and potential resource-based opportunities that could contribute to addressing environmental challenges. Firstly, scientific understanding. Studying the moon's geology, atmosphere or lack thereof and history can provide insight into Earth's past and future. Learning about planetary processes could aid in understanding environmental changes on the Earth. Next is space-based monitoring. The Moon's proximity to Earth makes it a platform for space-based observations. Lunar satellites and instruments could be used to monitor Earth's environment, including climate patterns, deforestation, pollution and more. Next, technological advancements. Developing technologies for lunar exploration such as efficient energy generation, waste recycling and life support systems could have applications on Earth. Innovations driven by space exploration could help mitigate environmental challenges. Resource potential. The moon's resources such as water ice in permanently shadowed craters could potentially be used for future space missions. Utilizing these resources could reduce the need for launching materials from the Earth, thus minimizing the environmental impact of space exploration. Next is inspiration and collaboration. Moon exploration and space activities can inspire people to think globally and work collaboratively on solving planetary challenges. Well, this mindset shift can contribute to a more environmentally conscious and cooperative approach. However, it's important to note that while the Moon offers possibilities, the solutions to environmental catastrophes on Earth lie in human cooperation. The Moon's potential contributions would likely be supplementary rather than primary in this context. With India's cultural values of the world being one family, will Chandrayaan-3 have a positive impact on cooperation for the common good of humanity? To understand this, we need to look at how ISRO's successes have had positive implications for the world, particularly for the third world countries in several ways. Firstly, affordable satellite launch services. ISRO's cost-effective launch services have enabled countries with limited resources to access space. Many developing nations have been able to launch their satellites for communication, remote sensing and scientific research fostering technological advancement and economic growth. Secondly, remote sensing and disaster management. ISRO's remote sensing satellites provide valuable data for disaster management, agriculture, urban planning and environmental monitoring. This information has been shared with other nations assisting in disaster response and resource management. Thirdly, telecommunication advancement. ISRO's communication satellites have facilitated telecommunication services bridging the digital divide in rural and remote areas of developing countries and enhancing connectivity and access to information. Fourthly, Global Navigation Services 
India's NAVIC satellite navigation system offers accurate positioning and timing information. This technology benefits various sectors including transportation, agriculture and disaster management, especially in regions without access to other global navigation systems. Fifthly, it is international collaboration. ISRO actively collaborates with various space agencies sharing knowledge and expertise. This collaboration has contributed to joint research, technological exchange and capacity building in space technology for several countries. Sixthly, inspiration and role model. ISRO's achievements serve as inspiration for other countries, showing that space exploration is achievable with determination and commitment. It demonstrates that even nations with limited resources can make significant strides in scientific and technological advancements. Seventhly, capacity building. ISRO has provided training and capacity building programs for scientists, engineers and researchers from developing countries, empowering them to contribute to their country's space and technology sectors. Eighthly, scientific research. ISRO space missions often include scientific payloads that provide valuable data for research in areas such as astronomy, planetary science and atmospheric studies, benefiting the global scientific community. Ninthly, it is healthcare and education. ISRO's advancements in satellite technology have been harnessed for telemedicine and distance education in remote and undeserved areas, improving healthcare access and educational opportunities. Tenthly, it is economic benefits. Collaborative projects and the commercial launch services offered by ISRO have boosted the economies of developing countries, creating opportunities for revenue generation and economic development. It is for this reason the world rejoices as India scripts history with the successful Chandrayaan-3 mission. So, in conclusion, we can say the utilization of newfound land and resources is influenced by complex geopolitical, economic and strategic considerations. While acquiring new resources can fulfill some needs, it's unlikely to completely quench the interest or ambitions of any nation, including China and former colonial powers in Europe. Competition for resources often involves a range of factors beyond just physical availability, including global power dynamics, economic interest, environmental concerns and geopolitical strategies. While space collaboration is a must for the future of space exploration, it is not always easy to achieve. It is important to note that competition and collaboration are not mutually exclusive. Getting to the moon now is more important than ever to ease trains on Earth's climate zones and ecosystems. Climate change is occurring more rapidly while shifts in energy use towards renewable strategies are too slow. Therefore, efforts on Earth need to speed up and getting off Earth as fast as possible and to the moon is part of a mandatory global requirement. 2030 is not a premium objective but it will have to do so. Countries can compete with each other while still cooperating on some level. For example, India and China are both members of the Artemis Accords, which commits them to working together to explore and use the moon peacefully. The future of space exploration will likely involve a mix of competition and collaboration. Countries will need to compete to achieve their goals, but they will also need to cooperate to share resources and expertise. In both the US and Indian context, maintaining a balanced approach when dealing with China as a competitor in space exploration requires a nuanced approach. We hope you found this episode as captivating as we did in creating it for you. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. See you soon.